This year, our mission objectives were to take pictures of penguin colony guano and use those images to estimate the area of the guano and thus the population of the penguin colonies. We took those objectives and created a set of design requirements and a plan for accomplishing the mission. We split up our conops into two phases. We have the pre-launch phase and the orbit phase. Pre-launch, we checked all of our code, all of our functions to make sure that everything on both the ground station and the CubeSat functioned as expected. Um, once the orbit started, on the ground station side, there were two processes running. One of them was receiving the pictures and the telemetry packets and saving them, and the other was pushing whatever it received to GitHub. On the CubeSat side of things, it started tracking the angle, and basically our goal was to take a photo every 30 degrees. And so it would track the angle, and when it reaches a location or a degree where we want to take a photo, it would start off a thread to take the photo, it would check if there's guano, if there was guano, it would send it, and then it would uh, transmit the telemetry packet, and then it would go back to tracking the angle until the next photo. So for our link budget, we used Bluetooth communication and the values that were the worst case scenario between the four of us. Um, so our worst distance to ground station was about five feet, and our average RSSI value was negative 64 decibel milliwatts, and then when we convert that to decibel watts, uh, we get a received power of negative 94. Um, our desired com time was about 15 seconds, and our average image file size was about 250 kibibytes, um, which gave us a desired downlink speed of about 16,000 bytes per second, and when we measured our downlink speed, we got 31,800 bytes per second, which was about an eight second com time. So our link margin was about 15,000 bytes per second. Uh, so our image, our image processing software uh, works by making a mask using predetermined HSV values as thresholds for the color of guano. Uh, using this mask, we find the number of pixels on our, in our picture that is guano, and with that information, we can set, use our predetermined value for, that translates the area for each pixel on screen to area in the real world. And when we add, use that formula, we can go ahead and find the actual area of the guano. Hey guys, so I'll be talking about ADCS. ADCS stands for Add to Determination Control Systems, and that's basically just a short term of how do you determine the orientation and position of your CubeSat in a certain place in time and space. And that's really important to your mission success. The way we did this is we used an IMU. So an IMU stands for Inertial Measurement Unit. And basically it's a combination of a magnetometer, an accelerometer, and a gyroscope. And it's a nine degree of freedom because uh, it's X, Y, Z axis uh, measurements in for three sensors. So three times three is nine. Um, the way we use this was we use the magnetometer to calibrate the CubeSat where we can set zero degrees to mag north. And using that uh, zero degrees, we can then use the gyroscope to read our uh, yaw readings relative to mag north every second. And then using our yaw readings, we can then pass that through our flight software where we can run through a condition where if our yaw readings are within this margin of degrees where we want an image to be taken, we can set that through a condition. And if so, we could take a picture. If not, we continue yaw readings. Hopefully that was uh, quickly um, a good intro, but we'll see you in the next section. So overall flight day went pretty well for me. Um, the code worked and I was able to downlink images and image processing worked as well. But there were a few um, roadblocks here and there um, while we were trying to get the code to work. So the first thing was that my camera is the Noir model, um, meaning that it takes mostly infrared pictures. So when I try to take a normal photo in daylight, it adds like sort of a pink filter. So I had to use a different filter to kind of get rid of that pink. And that ended up being like a different color than what it is in real life. So our guano was a little bit off, at least on my images. So we had to use a different threshold to get the image processing code to run. But then when we were trying to actually run the code, we realized that some of the images had the weird looking guano and others had normal looking guano. 
and so we had to kind of determine what threshold we were going to use and we ended up just using um we just ended up sending all the images that my satellite took instead of just the ones with guano in them just because it was too hard to differentiate between the two thresholds and then the ground station operator determined which threshold to use when actually doing the image processing um other than that my magnetometer was slightly off which gave us some strange angle measures but other than that i'd say it went pretty well uh so in general i'd say that flight a was a really great experience for me um although i wasn't successful along with someone else in my group um i think that it was still a really great experience um, on flight day, I ran into uh, a bug I never encountered before, where uh, when pushing and pulling from Git, it ran into some issues which ended up corrupting the file on my ground station, uh, which d didn't allow me to send files over. Uh, so I kind of wish, I guess one thing I wish is that um, I had more time or we worked a bit faster so I could test more so I wouldn't run into a bug like this but I think that overall it was still a really great experience and something we learned about from just the whole flight day process. Um, overall though I think we did pretty good because two of our group members were able to successfully downlink pictures from their CubeSat and send it over to GitHub and I'm glad our image processing code pretty much worked really well. Uh, overall, I think that was a really great experience and I'm happy I did this. Hey guys, so I'm back. I'll be talking a little bit about my flight test results from yesterday. Um, the first two people in my group, uh, Pranav and Nishida, they, theirs worked perfectly, but me and Raymond, they didn't. Um, the issue with mine specifically was it was sending a boot up confirmed text, meaning that a Bluetooth connection was established and that it could communicate with the ground station, uh, my FlyPi, but it wasn't sending any images, nor was it uh, taking any images and storing them within a SSD storage within the FlyPi. And so basically, uh, I wasn't able to receive any files on GitHub nor my team members. Uh, there really is no error I can really find as of now because I've done a lot of debugging yesterday night after flight time and it started working, but it just wasn't working before. And I did not do any changes to my files. I was just double checking and doing a lot of rebooting actually. Um, the main issue I think might have happened was in my uh, rc.local file, which is basically a boot up file that your Pi can read when it starts up a boot up. Um, at the end of my Python file name, there was two spaces um, and then ampersand, which should have just one space. I'm not really sure if that was the issue, but again, I have to do more debugging and things like this just happen in engineering and we just have to account for it. But other than that, uh, it was working perfectly fine uh, before and those were my errors for flight day.